Bassett Law Museum is actually built in a Georgian townhouse and the building was built around 1770, we think. Um, but it's changed an awful lot over the centuries. Where we're standing at the moment is at the end of our military corridor display. But originally we'd be standing outside of Amcott House and we can tell that we are standing outside because you can see in front of you an exterior drain pipe running down a wall which is in the, now in the middle of the museum. As we go up the, the drain pipe and then across you can see there's kind of like a, an arched balcony um, which is a bit of a strange thing to have but originally it would have been a window and next to it there is an arch over the stairs and again this would have been another window and the stairs come down towards us but when the building was first constructed this would have been an outside wall so the stairs wouldn't have come this way when we redeveloped the museum a few years ago we could actually see the line of the stairs in the next part of the corridor going away from us so they've the stairs have moved um, and uh, they, they now are still under cover these are the servant stairs as well so you can see that they are made of wood they're not expensive metal uh, that's been decorated as the main staircases uh, and they get plainer the further up you go they all, the treads are also very strange because you've got two flights that are the same one flight that's very narrow um, and by the time you get up to the attic you're very out of breath so when you came into a house like Amcot House it, everything is to impress the visitor and show off your wealth so here we have the staircase um, you might think there's not a lot you can do with a staircase but especially when it's a quite a small one like this but what they've done is they've got elaborate wrought iron um, spindles going up onto the stairs and a nice wooden handrail uh, if you see on the metalwork again we've got gold leaf which basically makes it just look a bit richer and a bit brighter and some of the very grand houses of this period you'll see very similar kinds of uh, ironwork but just rather more elaborate so for this sort of weekend townhouse this was still grand enough to impress a few people and show that you were important of course the other thing is uh, the back stairs where the servants were would not have had anything like this and would have been just made of wood this is the drawing room this is our grandest room in the house uh, and it's got a mirror our mirrors were very good for making rooms look bigger but also for reflecting light but this mirror has a secret when we redisplayed the house in 2008 We'd always wondered why the mirror isn't attached directly to the wall, but it's actually on a board that stands proud of the wall. Um, and as the redecoration was being done, we took the mirror down and looked behind the board and found that there was a very old painting there. Now, the painting was very badly damaged, uh, but it was of uh, basically an urn with flowers in it and we think it's probably part of the original uh, decoration scheme for the house so again it probably dates to about the 18th century uh, as we move away from the mirror there's a, a another rather nice painting actually directly onto the wall it's a looks like somewhere in Italy with Roman temples and fountains and things we think this is from a slightly later decoration phase for the house but again as we move further round onto the next wall we can see above a door 
another urn of flowers and this is the same decoration scheme that is behind the mirror so this and another painting would have originally have gone with the one that was behind the mirror so it's nice to know that we uh, we're still finding out some of the secrets that the house has when you're in an old building it's always a good idea to look up it's not always very easy because it hurts your neck but it's always a good idea to look at the ceiling the ceiling in Amcot House uh, is one of its best features again dates from the 18th century and it's decorated in this raised plaster design that you can see with the, the little cherubs uh, and garlands of flowers and things like that and you can see it's got gold coloured bits on the ceiling well it's not just gold coloured it is gold and when we had the house refurbished we did a lot of research into what the older decoration schemes were like including taking samples through the paint and we found out that originally there'd been gold leaf in certain places in the ceiling and so when we restored the ceiling we put gold leaf back on it's quite strange to walk into a room and have people on scaffolding dropping gold onto your head but it's uh, quite a nice feeling now the gold actually has a practical purpose as well because of course when this house was built there weren't even gas lights let alone electric lights and all your light came from candles and if you could come into this room in the autumn or the winter you will see the light sparkle off the ceiling good morning my name is sam glassman and i'm the curator of bassett Gold museum and we are based in retford in north nottinghamshire this is one of my favorite exhibits it's one of our most unusual things in fact it's practically unique uh, it's not very pretty it doesn't look like much uh, but it is an ancient boat. It dates to around the year 460 AD, which is a really interesting period because it's the time when the Roman Britain is ending and the first Anglo-Saxons are migrating to this country. It was dragged out of the River Idol at Mattersea and as you can see, it's mostly complete. There's a, we've lost a bit from over there, but you can still see that it's a, a boat. Um, because it's wood, 